Well, here we are tonight in Ottawa, and as you can see, uh, we're at the Ottawa Heart Institute, and it's a real blessing to have a facility like the Heart Institute here in Ottawa, a world-class medical facility. If you have some kind of heart disease or a malfunction in your heart, here's a place to go where people can help you. But, you know, a problem with your physical heart is not the most uh, important problem or the worst problem that a human being can have. Uh, the Bible talks about our spiritual heart, the inner man, who we really are. And listen to what we read in Psalm 14. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, their deeds are vile, there is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good. No, not even one. Will evil do doers never learn? Those who devour my people as many bread and who do not call on the Lord? There they are, overwhelmed with dread, for God is present in the company of the righteous. You evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice in Israel be glad. Well, that's God's word, and we see right there in the opening verse, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Uh, atheism the common word that's attached to that kind of thinking and living. You know, in 2006, the journalist Gary Wolf coined the term the new atheism. It was popularized by people like uh, Richard Dawks, Dawkins and Daniel Dennett and Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens. They were called the four horsemen of the non-apocalypse. Uh, but their atheism uh, as intellectual as they may be, their atheism was nothing new. Atheism is nothing new. Psalm 14 uh, speaks about it, but notice what it says, the fool says in his heart. There's nothing more foolish than to be an atheist. Uh, and of course, in the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul tells us that because of the things that have been made, Everyone understands that God exists and knows that God exists. God doesn't believe in atheists. And so the fool saying in his heart, there is no God, is just a, a person, though he knows that God exists, is trying to live life without having God in his thoughts or her thoughts. Uh, trying to disbelieve that God really notices or sees or will judge. Uh, but of course, what does the psalm say? The Lord looks down from heaven. The Lord does see these things. And that atheism in the heart works itself out into uh, evil deeds, as the psalm goes on to speak about. They devour my people as many bread. They do not call on the Lord. Uh, so as it says in Romans 1, they neither worship God nor thank him, and they don't love their neighbor. So they really break the first and second great commandment. They don't love God with their whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. They don't love their neighbor as themselves. But whoever David had in mind in his day doing these sorts of things, uh, we have to remember that the Apostle Paul takes these words in Psalm 14 and he quotes them in Romans chapter 3 as an indictment not just on a few people, but as on uh, an indictment on all of humanity born into sin as the descendants of Adam. This is Romans 3, verse 10. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, none who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. The way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be silenced 
and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. Matthew Henry said of Psalm 14 that sin is the disease of mankind. And here it appears, in Psalm 14, here it appears as malignant and epidemic. It's the real pandemic. Sin. It doesn't love God with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, and doesn't love our neighbor as ourselves. The wonderful thing is that Paul goes on to say, but now a righteousness from God, apart from the law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness comes from God. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. And that's exactly what David in the psalm uh, looks forward to, doesn't he, when he says, Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion, when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, or where he restores uh, his captive people. And that's what has uh, happened in the Lord Jesus Christ. God has sent his king in Zion. Jesus Christ is the king and savior of his people. And uh, there's nowhere that we see that God really sees sin and will judge sin more than the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And so God does see sin and he does judge sin. But how wonderful to know the substitute savior, the Lord Jesus Christ so that the sins of all of God's elect were carried by Christ on the cross and he paid the penalty for those sins and he said, it is finished. Uh, what a blessing to be forgiven even of the greatest sin because of the greatest commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The fool says in his heart there is no God. That the scriptures can make us wise unto salvation through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, when I think about atheism, when I think about the fool saying in his heart there is no God, uh, there's a way that we are not atheists theologically or philosophically, and yet we can be atheists practically, even as Christians. Uh, we can live our lives, we can think as if there is no God, and we do that all the time. Whenever we sin, fool says in his heart there is no God. The foolish, it's being foolish. Whenever we don't confess our sin, it's as if God didn't exist. Christ hadn't come. Uh, you know, when we worry about tomorrow, it's foolish. When we have the fear of man more than the fear of God, the fool says in his heart there is no God. These are ways that practical atheism and come out. You know, it mentions worship in Psalm 14. You do not call on the name of the Lord. Worship, prayer. When I'm not worshiping privately, family worship on the Lord's day, coming to worship with God's people, worshiping in spirit and in truth. When I'm not praying, these are all ways that I can be a practical atheist, even as a Christian. When I'm not rejoicing in the Lord as I'm commanded to do. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. So there are lots of ways, friends, that we, even as believers, can fall into practical atheism. And we need to think about those things and think about how foolish that is. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. But in Proverbs chapter one, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Let's pray. Father, we believe, help our unbelief. Father, forgive us for being foolish 
even as Christians, when you are not in our thoughts as you should be. And Lord, even when you are not in our thoughts and we live as if we are practical atheists, how amazing it is to remember that we are always in your thoughts. And we were in your thoughts when you sent your Son to this world, for you so loved the world. You love the world in this way that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, we pray that you would make us wise unto salvation and make us wise in our salvation and we would keep you in our thoughts and that we would be able to worship, pray, live, and rejoice in the salvation that has come out of Zion in Jesus Christ. In his name we pray.